President Obama is set to announce a new rule that would make over 5 million workers eligible for overtime pay now. Now, as the New York Times writes, there's going to be three categories of people who are going to be impacted by this. Now, when it comes to the first category, the New York Times states, the first category includes workers in the 23,660 to 5 or 50,440 salary range who under the current federal rules are legitimately exempt from receiving overtime pay because their jobs involve some professional, managerial or supervisory duties. The administration estimates that there are nearly 5 million workers who fit this description. Now, the second category includes workers in the targeted salary range like clerks who should already be eligible for overtime pay because their jobs feature no bona fide managerial or supervisory component and no independent responsibility, but whom employers have misclassified and denied overtime pay. Now, as for the third category, this includes workers in the targeted salary range who are eligible to receive overtime and currently receive it, but who are vulnerable to such reclassification. So now, this is good news, but I just want to iterate that this is only a small step in the right direction. So the real thing that um, we can really do as a nation to strengthen workers' rights is to really build up unions. So now, according to SEIU in 2010, only 13.9% of workers um, or the population is represented by unions. Now, union workers make over $10,000 more than their non-union counterparts. Public sector workers in unions make about $165 more per week than their non-union peers. And in the private sector, workers make $155 more than their non-union workers. So if unions are present, workers are going to make higher wages on average. And this is beneficial for the economy because if you have more purchasing power, if you're a middle-class individual, then you can actually go out and stimulate the economy by purchasing cars and buying Xboxes and what have you. So yes, we need lower wage and middle-class workers to actually go out there and buy things. That's the way the economy functions. Now, the so-called right to work laws, which allows people to opt out of paying their union fees, it's it's in effect basically destroyed unions, and this is extremely problematic because, as I just mentioned, once unions go down, workers' wages also go down with it. It's directly correlated and, and a cause. Um, so this holds true in every single country in the world. I don't want you guys to think that um, unions are only something that's important in America. If you look at every single country, um, every single continent, Latin America, uh, Europe, then you're going to find that the stronger unions are, the stronger the middle class is. So now what we also need to do is we, one, need to raise the minimum wage. Two, we need to abandon harmful trade deals such as the TPP because Doctors with Borders actually uh, just recently came out and they said that this deal is going to increase the cost of medication, not only just around the world, but here in America. So how's that going to help the middle class? Obama's been saying that it's going to help the middle class. That's not going to help the middle class. That's directly going to hurt the middle class and hurt the poor. Now, also what we need to do is tax the wealthy and reallocate the funds to social safety net programs and uh, to creating jobs. Now, a lot of people are going to immediately, that, that red flag is going to go up. They're going to say, oh, look at him. He wants to reallocate wealth. Well, yes, I do. You're in favor of it as well. And in fact, we're already reallocating wealth. But the problem is that it's going from the bottom to the top. Because if the government is taking my tax dollars and they're giving it to Walmart to pay for uh, welfare and whatnot for Walmart workers, because Walmart can't even afford, or they can afford it, but they don't want to pay their own workers uh, living wages, well, that's reallocation of wealth. It's coming from the bottom going to the top. What we need is for wealth to go from the top to the bottom. It doesn't have to be extreme, but they just need to pay their fair share. I think that's totally reasonable. Now, the last thing that we need to do if we want to help workers is elect Bernie Sanders. Again, I've been one of the biggest champions on YouTube for Bernie Sanders. I, I talk about him every single week. Um, and I can't tell you how beneficial he will be. I mean, look, he's not going to just have... Um, a golden pen where he can do anything, right? But the fact of the matter is that um, even if um, he has uh, Congress against him, if it's all a Republican Congress in 2016, uh, if he gets elected, hypothetically, well then he's still going to be introducing a lot of uh, executive orders and whatnot that's going to directly help him. So if Bernie Sanders can galvanize the public enough, then more people will also vote for senatorial races and whatnot which would be better for the Democratic Party, which would benefit Bernie Sanders if he was the president. So now my question to my viewers is, um, are you in favor of raising the minimum wage? Uh, so if you are, then comment down below. If not, then I want you to tell me why. Provide me with a study maybe that would uh, validate your opinion.